Hello, hello everyone! Welcome back to another Fallout 76 guide! Faction reputation is part of the new endgame content and I'm about to show you how to farm as much rep as you want. Let's start! In the past two days I have been exploring a lot and I discovered dozens of new random encounters across the map. I also came across a few interesting locations that turned out to be key points to farm unlimited faction reputation. However, there's quite a few things you need to know in order to make your runs as effective as possible. I've spent hours farming two single locations to test things properly and I ended up doing over 75 runs in total. Before we start, let me remind you that the random encounter frequency can vary from person to person, which means your experience will most likely be slightly different from mine, but it shouldn't be too different from what you are about to see. Moreover, other players can also interfere with what you will find most of the time at least. So let me tell you about this new type of random encounter location that allows you to farm reputation in a very efficient and consistent way. Let me introduce you to the faction versus faction random encounters, the new way to farm unlimited reputation in the Wastelanders DLC. I am sure you came across several new random encounters during your Wastelanders adventure, but did you know that one of the new categories is some sort of faction versus faction encounters? That's right, the encounter pool is set to spawn two random factions per encounter and that's why farming them works like a charm if your goal is to get as much reputation as possible. Now, all you need to do is find a location with this random encounter category. Don't worry, I'm going to provide you two of them in this guide, but I do believe there are many others out there. Let me do a quick explanation here though. The following locations are random encounter spawns and whenever they spawn an encounter, it will always be a faction versus faction one. This doesn't exactly mean it will spawn an NPC faction like the Settlers or the Raiders. It means it spawns two categories or a certain type of mob pair encounter, such as Scorched against Settlers or Raiders vs Wolves, or even Ghouls vs Liberators. There's a huge list of possible enemy types that it can spawn. I hope I made this part clear. Now, I know what you might be thinking, then I won't always find NPCs to earn reputation. Yep, that's correct, but this is probably the best you will get once you are done with the faction questlines and complete your faction daily quests. I don't think there is any other way to farm reputation right now, especially an unlimited way like this one. Remember that faction dailies can only be done once every 24 hours, so if you really want to max out your reputation with the settlers, raiders or even both, this is your master strategy to do so. In fact, you can easily farm reputation for both factions if you wish to become a middleman. I have been doing this in the past few days and I managed to raise a few bars already. Slowly but steady. Figures they spawn more often than you might think. So now let's go over each location. So at the Marigold Pavilion near Point Pleasant, you will always come across the type of random encounter I have talked about in the previous point. Keep in mind that you need to server jump a lot here to farm a reputation. There is no other way around it. There are basically four main categories of spawns you can find here. Faction versus faction or settlers versus raiders, where the raiders are always the attacking party. You need to choose a faction to defend and you will earn rep based on your choice. Makes sense, right? Secondly, you can find a faction versus enemies. You can either find the settlers or the raiders fighting a huge wave of enemies such as Liberators, Protectrons, Wolves, Scorched or even Ticks. There's a huge list as I mentioned before. You can also find enemies versus enemies, in that case you can't get any reputation for obvious reasons, so you should just 
move on, cypher jump again. Lastly, you can find a lone settler who wants to kill all the opossums around him. It's weird since they are not even hostile, but he rewards your reputation for clearing the area, so do it. That's all the type of encounters I found in my 44 several jumps in this location. I can share some more data with you to give you a better idea of what you can find in this location. After checking my entire footage, I came across the following encounters. 16 for settlers, 9 for raiders, 4 for settlers against the raiders, 8 with only enemies, 4 empty spawns and 3 runs where the encounter was already spawned, thus on cooldown. It's an impressive result and as you can see, it's possible to find NPCs most of the time and earn reputation that way. Sure, you have to server jump a lot, endure lots of loading screens and rely on luck, but grinding is never a pleasant experience in my opinion. In the end, the Marigold Pavilion is a great location to farm rep for both factions at the same time, since you tend to get lots of faction versus enemy encounters. Ideal for those who want to become a middleman, unlike the second and following location. Let's get over it now. Alright, at the Slocum's Joe, also in the forest region, you can find a similar random encounter spawn system, except you seem to find way more faction versus faction encounters for some reason. Of course, you still get all the others I've mentioned before, especially the faction versus enemy ones, but I got way more settlers versus raiders encounters in this location. It's time for the data reveal. I did 32 runs in total at Slocum's Joe, or in other words, 32 severed jumps. And this is what I found. 11 settlers versus raiders, 6 raiders, 5 for the settlers, 5 empty spawns, 4 with only enemies, and only one on cooldown. As you can see, the encounter type frequency is really different when compared to the Marigold Pavilion. Then again, it could be because this is how random encounters are supposed to work, just a lot of luck and RNG. Or maybe the second location really has an increased chance to spawn faction versus faction events. I need to do way more testing before coming to a conclusion. Anyway, just a quick tip, please don't use explosive weapons for your own sake. Especially in faction versus faction encounters, you can easily end up hitting both factions at once and then kill them. Then no rub for you, just a heads up. Moreover, if you happen to test things out yourself, do let me know about your findings. I always like to know how right or wrong I am. Anyway, there's something else very interesting right in front of the store. There's a dynamic random encounter spawn for NPCs. How do I know? Well, I tested it. There's also a big tent and a fire camp there. That's a huge sign it's a rich spawn. You can find all sorts of NPCs here, as you can see, such as scientists, soldiers, scavengers, traders, and even potential allies. The curious part is that you can also find a random encounter that allows you to choose what faction reputation you want by advising two scavengers about where they should go. You can tell them to join the raiders or the settlers and earn rep according to your decision. That's pretty cool, it's a great detail. This encounter is quite uncommon though. I only found it twice so far in my 32 runs, so just to give you a little bit of an idea. Another interesting fact is that you will see them running towards the main settlement you advise them, the crater or the foundation. Details, huh? Alright, I left this part for last because I know some of you are not interested in the details and want the information straight to the point which I already have provided you with. I still think the following tips are important, otherwise I would leave them out. So, in order to make your farming session a success, you should consider the following things. First, the spawns might be empty. It's uncommon, but it does happen every now and then. 
and you can sometimes find spawn encounters. If no enemies spawn with you and if you see any dead bodies then it means the encounter has been spawned by someone else and it's currently on cooldown. Just sever jump if that's the case. After all, it takes over 15 minutes for the encounter to reset, so it's really not worth waiting for it. Sever jumping will always be quicker. If you end up with a no NPC run, then you know what to do. Don't waste ammo or bother with the low level enemies, just sever jump right away. Now, when you are done killing the enemies, keep in mind that a reputation reward takes a while to pop sometimes, or most of the time actually. You should talk to each NPC separately until you receive your reputation. I think there are a few bugs here. Sometimes I get my rep automatically without doing anything. Sometimes I need to talk to one or several NPCs until I receive it. And other times it takes over 30 seconds to make it pop. I suspect there is a huge delay in some servers, but then again, sometimes it feels like there is a group leader that you must talk to in order to receive the reputation. Talking to one NPC does nothing, but then the next one talks and makes the rap pop. Maybe it's a coincidence, I don't know exactly. Well, whichever the case, make sure to bother them until they reward you. That's the most important. The next tip is quite obvious, but still, if you use explosive weapons, make sure to use something else while farming reputation. Why? Well, you can easily kill any nearby NPC while attempting to protect them. In some cases, you can get rep if you kill the NPCs, so better safer than sorry. Also, while server jumping, don't rush kill the enemy wave right away. Let them engage the settlers or the raiders first, otherwise the system won't recognize you have defended them and there won't be any reputation for you, sadly. Lastly, don't be too late defending the factions. If all NPCs die, there's no reward for you. Actually, I had one encounter where only one NPC survived and he didn't give me any reps, so make sure they stay alive. I hope these tips will make your rep runs way easier and more pleasant to do. I'm really glad I found out how to farm reputation because this is one of the most grindy aspects of the game right now. I have just finished the main quests and you can do the dailies very quickly, then what? There's no other way to farm rep and the bars move very slowly. So this is really helpful in my opinion. I would suggest you to head to the Marigold Pavilion if you want to farm rep with both the settlers and the raiders factions. But if you want to max out your rep with just one faction, then head to the Slocum's Joe. You will most likely find more choice there, thus earning more rep for the faction you want. Don't forget to check the tent for the random event there as well. You can get a small extra every now and then. Well, that's all for this guide. Thank you so much for watching. I am Arthur Branco and my Easter screenshot event is ending soon. Submit your best Easter or Wastelanders screenshot to win awesome prizes. Join my Discord to participate and learn all about the rules in the events channel. The link is right below the video. Now, if you enjoyed this guide, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more content like this. You can also support me even further if that's your wish. The link are always below the video. Anyhow, that's everything for now. I hope you are enjoying the new Wastelanders content. I surely am. I will see you guys and girls in the next video. Until then, take care. Adios. Bye bye.